What's going on guys? In this video I'll be going over the threading module. Uh, this is actually a remake of my first threading video. Uh, the quality wasn't as good as I would have liked, so thus the remake. Um, so what is threading? Threading allows us to run multiple tasks run concurrently. Um, what I mean by concurrently is having multiple tasks run independently. So while task A is running, I can start task B. I don't have to wait for task A to finish. So that's pretty much what uh, having multiple tasks run independently means or concurrently. Now, one way of having tasks run concurrently is having all your tasks run in parallel, which means simultaneously. When uh, tasks are running simultaneously, they're utilizing multiple CPUs, uh, one CPU for each task. However, this is a problem in Python, and this is due to something called the global interpreter lock. The global interpreter lock prevents threads from actually running in parallel, and they can only use one processor at a time within a script. So to run threads concurrently, Python uses another technique called uh, task switching. So Python switches between each thread very rapidly, making it seem like our program is actually running multiple tasks in parallel. But remember, they're not running multiple tasks in parallel, it just seems like it. This can actually be very useful for event-driven tasks that have a lot of downtime and are waiting for the user to input something. In the series, we'll actually go through a few examples of how threads can be useful. So in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to initialize a thread. And um, in the next video, I'll show you some of the uh, benefits of uh, threads. So uh, to utilize threads, what we need to do is uh, import the threading module. So import threading. So that's it. Import the threading module. And for our case, I'm actually going to import time. And now the first thing you want to do is whenever you use a, a thread, you need to have a function. So threads actually execute a function. So whenever you want to create a thread, you need to have a function. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a function and then we'll initialize a thread. Um, I'll explain the function afterwards. First, I will uh, just write up the function and then I will initialize a thread and teach you guys um, all the parameters in initializing a thread. So I'm going to create a, a function called sleeper. So this is just going to pretty much sleep. So hi, I am, and then string formatting, blah, blah, blah. Okay, going to sleep for uh, five seconds. Let's see. This should work. Um, uh, slash n. Dot format. And now we're just going to print the name. All right. This looks good. Now time dot sleep. And we're going to sleep for n seconds. And then after we wake up, we're just going to say that uh, has woken up from from sleep. Uh, actually, put a new line. Uh, dot format. Okay, and in the format we'll use the name. All right, so don't worry too much about this function. Let me just actually expand this so you guys can see it. All right. So yeah, so this is the function that we're going to have the thread execute. Now, let's get to initializing a thread. So we're going to initialize our thread, and we're going to name it t. So t equals. Now to initialize a thread. You call the uh, threading module, and now you're going to call the thread class within the threading module. So threading.thread initializes a thread. Now there's a few parameters uh, we need to uh, be aware of. So the first is the target parameter. So target is actually uh, the function that we want to execute. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to execute this sleeper function. So you want to put target equals sleeper. So remember, sleeper is our function, so the target parameter uh, needs a function. Now, the next parameter I want to go into, or the next argument I want to go into is uh, the name uh, argument. So the name is just uh, just naming a thread. So in this case, we're going to name it thread1. And once you have a lot of threads, it's beneficial to name your threads so you can um, easily differentiate between different threads. Yeah, so um, name equals thread. And now let's see, put a comma and uh, the next uh, argument is args. So args is the args for our function. So in this case, our function is the sleep function. Uh, any args we want to use with our function, we put it here. So 
In this case, I, I want to put 5 for n, so we're going to be sleeping for 5 seconds. And the other argument is the thread names, in this case, uh, thread 1. So those are the two arguments I'm going to use. So 5 here, and the name is going to be the thread name. All right, so that's it. So let's just run this. I guess this should work. Line 20. So I forgot to close this parentheses. If I run this again, okay, so this seems to be good. No problems here. All right, so we created our function. Now we've initialized a thread. Now, to actually run a thread, we need to uh, call a specific method. So in this case, to run a thread is just uh, t.start. So t.start will uh, run our thread. So let's just check this out. I'm going to run this now. Okay, so actually, uh, let me just uh, pull this here. And let me just run it again. Uh, here we go. Okay, we're going to run it again. All right, so hi, I'm thread1, going to sleep for five seconds. And then thread has woken up from sleep. Okay, so hi, I am thread here. So this is the name. Actually, let me put a space here. So hi, I am thread1, um, going to sleep for five seconds. And then it sleeps, and then um, thread1 has woken up from uh, sleep. So let's just uh, look back at the uh, output. Hi, I am thread1 going to sleep for five seconds. Then five seconds passes and thread1 has woken up from sleep. Now, let me teach you guys. So that's basically how to uh, create and uh, initialize a thread. So now I'm going to uh, explain to you, or I'm going to show you one aspect of concurrency. Let's just consider this uh, main program. So this entire script as the main thread. And let's just consider T as uh, a separate thread. So uh, usually when we run a program um, and something is sleeping for a few seconds, we have to wait for the that portion to wake up before we can continue with the rest of the program. So in this case, um, I'm going to show you how we are going to run uh, two concurrent tasks. So t.start is going to start its task, which is uh, executing the sleeper function. And while it's executing its function, we're actually going to uh, continue on with the rest of the main program or the main thread. So um, what I'm going to do is just uh, print a couple of hello statements. So what I want to show is that despite t.start um, not finishing executing its task, which is uh, this function here, um, we're able to switch back to the main thread or the main program and continue running the rest of the lines of the main program. So in this case, we just want to print hello twice. So Essentially, we don't have to wait for T, the thread, to finish its task um, before we can uh, execute the rest of the lines from the main thread or the main program. So I'm going to run this and just show you guys what I mean. So if I run this, all right, so hi, I'm thread1, going to sleep for five seconds, hello, hello. Thread1 has woken up from sleep. So let's just uh, take a look at this. So hi, I am thread1, going to sleep for five seconds. So we've executed, we've started the thread. But even before it finishes its task, we're able to print out these hello statements. So we're able to switch back. We're able to switch back to the main thread and uh, execute the code from the uh, main thread. And then we switch back to the uh, sleeper thread when it's ready to uh, print a statement. So this is what I mean by a uh, concurrency. It's sort of going back and forth. Now, sometimes you actually don't want your thread to switch or you don't want Python to switch to the main thread until your uh, thread finishes executing its function. So if you wanted your thread to actually finish executing this entire function before it actually jumps back to the main program or the main thread, um, what you can do is you can use this uh, t.join method. So t.join is essentially what they call a blocking call or a blocking method. It essentially blocks the interpreter from accessing or executing the main program until the thread uh, finishes its task. So essentially, it prevents Python from executing any of the statements or any, any of the code in the main program until, until the thread finishes executing its function. So what's going to happen is we're not going to be able to print these statements until tjoin unblocks. So tjoin will unblock when uh, this, this thread has completed finishing its task. So when the thread completes its task, then we'll be able to move on with the print statements. So let me just run this now. And hi, I'm thread1 going to sleep for five seconds. So we're waiting for the thread to finish its task. And once it's finished its task, we can move on to the hello print statements. So 
Yeah, so t.join is there to block execution. So it prevents the execution of the main program until this thread finishes executing its function. So that's it with this video. I just wanted to show you how to initialize threads and a couple of uh, simple methods like t.store, t.join, and some of the uh, common parameters. And in the next video, we'll be running multiple threads and that will give you a better idea of how we can execute multiple threads to uh, execute tasks concurrently. Alright, so I'll see you guys in the next video.